This is a horn schematic from a General Motors vehicle, which uses a relay to control the horns, and a relay is a device that allows a low current path in the circuit, so this would be the low current path here, the relay coil, and in this case we have two different ways of turning it on. We can use either the horn switch or the body control module, or BCM, can turn on the horn relay as well from a signal from the theft deterrent module. And that kind of information about the circuit and the way it operates, there's usually in the manufacturer's manuals, there's a section called description and operation, which on occasion it could be part of the schematic where they describe how it operates, but most of the time it's in a separate section where you find this description and operation page and it will describe how that particular circuit works. So it might say something in words, power is supplied, through a 10 amp fuse to the relay coil of the horn relay and a ground path is supplied by either pressing the horn switch or through the BCM relay control when it gets a signal from the theft deterrent module. And then when the relay is activated, it closes the switch inside the horn relay and allows the 20 amp circuit to power up the horn and in this case we have a dual horn assembly. So description operation is there for when you need further clarification where you can't understand the picture just from the way it's laid out. Now on this picture you pretty much can understand most of what's going on. Maybe you wouldn't know when the BCM would be using this horn control circuit but with the description and operation they're telling you it turns on when the theft deterrent module sends a signal to the BCM or when you're hitting the panic button on your remote control for the car. To outline the two paths for power load and ground, let's just take a quick look and highlight these two paths. The power side of the circuit would be everything up from where the 12 volts is supplied all the way to the relay coil. And the relay coil itself is the load here. This is the part that's going to use up the voltage. And remember, a relay is an electromagnet like when you were in school science class when you were younger and you took a piece of wire and wrapped it around a metal nail, it would become an electromagnet. And inside a relay, they've just taken very thin wire and wrapped it thousands of times around a piece of metal core. That becomes the electromagnet, just like the experiment you did in school. That's what will pull this switch over when we give power and ground to the wire that is connected to the nail, which in this case is the relay coil instead of a nail. The ground path would be then everything from the bottom of the relay coil all the way to the ground. And like I said before, in this case, either switch could be the ground for this. So I could either press the horn switch and I would have my ground path through here. Or if I hit the panic button on my remote, the BCM would get the signal from the theft deterrent module and it would close this switch and that would give me the completion of the ground path in this direction over here. Now let's look at the power load and ground on the switch side of the relay. We would have the power side would be everything from where it's 12 volts up until and now this switch would be closed when the relay is activated and the power side would be all the way through the relay switch and up to the positive side of the horn assembly itself where inside the 12 volts would actually be available all the way up to where the horn coil starts on each horn. And then the load would be the horns themselves, and then the ground path would be this area underneath. And in this case, the horns are in parallel, so they both get 12 volts so that they can sound nice and loud. And this ground path is shared by both horns down to here. So that's the basic operation of the circuit. What I'm going to show you in the next video is some of the additional detail that gets put on a schematic that can be very helpful for where certain connector locations might be, what they look like, um, the different components that are involved. Like you might see the BCM identified a little differently on the picture. You might see the location of where these fuse boxes are. So in the next video, I'll show you a more complex version of this schematic, how you would see it from the factory, and we'll go over what all those different other items are so that you'll understand them.